quarter final action ready to commence. Best players in the world ready to rumble in Riyadh. Let's get the action underway and the players to the table. Up first, please welcome four time champion of the world, the Jester from Leicester, Mark. Form fresh off his players' championship victory. Please welcome the pistol, Mark Allen. and Phil Yates. Quarter finals day of the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker. Day two, the field now whittled down to just eight players from the initial 12. And another heavyweight encounter in the offing. Mark Allen against Mark Selby. First round. Mark Allen. Allen has just claimed another impressive title. The Players' Championship added to his CV alongside the shootout this season. He was player of last season. Mark Selby, of course, who returned to form impressively during the last campaign, beating Mark Allen in an epic world semi final. A couple more titles on his CV before losing the Crucible final to Luca Brussel. Not before he made a maximum break in the final to become the first player so to do. He'd love to replicate that achievement here, of course, and add the golden ball. And with it, pocket the first prize of just under £400,000. A rich history between this pair. Selby has won eight, Allen nine, so it couldn't be any tighter in terms of the head-to-head, -head, and we're expecting another close match today, Neil. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how this match develops. Um, I think it's been a, a pretty good scoring table, hasn't it? We nearly saw the 1-6-7 from John Higgins yesterday. Now, these two are master tacticians, but I still feel it'll be a scoring match. Although that was... Uh, Probably out of character. Safety shot, which he looks to have got away with from Selby. We actually saw Rerek yesterday in the frame which followed the attempt at the maximum plus, the super maximum, whatever you want to call it. We might get one here if we're not careful because I don't see what Mark Allen can do. So this might be a stalemate frame. Yeah. Yep, it is. So there you have. We've waited a while for it, and here we are. We've had a quick rerun. What I will say is, I was thinking about this last night because we haven't seen that golden blue move yet at all. Because clearly it's only on the table while there's a maximum on. But I think if anyone will use it to their advantage, Mark Selby's the man. You know, he could play a safety shot where his players hampered over it. So he is such a, a clever player that that just might be moved from that position at the very beginning of a frame, whether a one four seven. And the 20 points added comes of that, I don't know, but you now he's a clever player, is Mark Selby, as we all know. So we prepare to go again at the start of our first quarter final of the day. The winner of this match will play the winner of our next match in this afternoon's session. Luca Brussel. The world champion, of course, against Ali Carter, who came through that thrilling match against Ding Zhongwei last night. Carter seemingly at one stage coasting to victory. Mr. Black at 3-1, and in the end, Ding got the snookers he needed in the decider, had a chance to win it, went in off. And Carter grateful to get through. So that match is coming next, but it's take two in frame one in quarterfinal one. Mark Allen against Mark Selby. Allen getting us underway, as mentioned. Allen just edging the head-to-head 9-8. -head, to eight. This is their second meeting this season. They met in the quarterfinals of the Masters. That was a dramatic match. Mark Allen was 4-1 behind at one stage, made a maximum break before winning by six frames to five. 
It's been quite a patchy sort of season for Selby. He's had some highlights, not least that extraordinary whitewash victory over O'Sullivan at the Players' Championship in the quarterfinals when he was quite brilliant. Then lost a close one to Zhang Ander in the semis, but still looking for a title this season. He'd love to start here. As you point out, though, the fact that Allen is in front of the head-to-heads, albeit just by one match, there aren't many players that can say that they're in front on the head-to-heads against someone like Mark Selby. Just missing the golden ball again there. A few near misses on that ball so far, as far as even him shifting it from its position. It looks somewhat entrenched there at the moment. That might change. I mean, that World Championship match which they played was a pretty gruelling affair, wasn't it? And uh, I think a lot of things led to Luca Brasil winning the world title. One is that he was the best player. Now, I'm not even taking anything like that away because I believe he was the best player over the 17 days. But the fact that the semi-final took so long between the other two into the morning of the final, I think that was a very strong reason to believe that Brasil went into the match the fresher of the two because these two had a pretty bruising encounter, didn't they? Which took an awful long time to resolve. This, of course, a lot different best of seven, whereas best of 33, four session match they played. I think he'd be playing it again from where he was because it was quite nasty the position of the balls. He tried to play a little swerve to hit the edge of the bunch, but he missed it by a way. Won the English Open last season, yeah. beating Luke no. Brussel in that final, and then the WST Classic in his hometown of Leicester. Too much swerve on this last shot. He's done it again. Well, he'll get warned this time because this is comes to be a free ball or something. Which is so a different shot is going to be played because uh, he'll get warned because he's got a clear shot at a red. So now he's already thinking about another shot, which will not be the same as the last one. Can't risk it for a I third time, it, yeah. or else the frame goes against him. The yeah. There's a warning from Jan Verhaas. <coughs> Strange, the amount of times you see the third attempt and you say, well, why on earth wouldn't you play that in the first place? It looks to be a safe option. Very safe in that you're not going to hit, not hit a red anyway. Allen's victory at the Players' Championship propelled him up to fourth place on the one-year list. When you consider he wasn't inside the top 32 before he won the shootout. That tournament got him into the World Grand Prix. But he's hitting form at just the right time, it seems, with another tilt at the World Championship in mind. That's the last Rubicon for Alan de Cross, having now won the UK and the Masters. Mark Selby, of course, a nine times Triple Crown champion. Four years running, world number one. Well, this time there is a kiss on the golden ball, be it a double kiss. Not really moved very much, if at all. So, I mean, I think it will be a scoring match, but we started off with a uh, not untypical bout of prolonged safety and a re wreck.
course, the other thing to remember is that the, the money at stake here, every round is so significant. And, uh, of course, that will also lend itself to quite exciting snooker with a few nerves frayed, no doubt. £50,000 guaranteed just for being in the quarterfinals, being among the top eight in the world coming into this tournament. Rising to a quarter of a million for the winner of the tournament. It's a fine safety shot. It really is. He's putting Selby in all sorts of trouble at the moment, Alan. Whether that will be uh, a deciding factor in the match, well, it isn't usually because Selby's very often got the answers. But, of course, the Mark Allen newer way of playing involves playing good safety, which he certainly showed in that Zhang Anda final of the Players' Championship in Telford last week. It wasn't a classic final, but his safety was very good throughout it. This is a terrific shot from Selby. I think that's exactly what he played. I would expect Mark Allen to tap the table. <laughs> that shot, if he thinks he played it, maybe not. But I'm sure he did play it. Can't think what else he would have played there. He's finding that bolt cushion with monotonous regularity, it seems. It does feel as though Alan has added extra layers to his game to make him the more complete match player now. Previous seasons, he was known for being a mercurial sort of player at his best, a devastating scorer, break builder, but he's added that match play now. His safety, as we've seen already in this match, up there with the best of them. Yes, he's won that battle all right, hasn't he? Whether that red will pass the black, he certainly deserves to because he certainly got the better of that little argument, but nothing goes still. Battle line certainly drawn early in this match, both players slogging it out with the safety. Such an important element of the game, of course. All of the players these days are such great potters and break builders that winning the safety battle, imperative if you were to come through matches like this against top-class opposition and go on to lift the big titles. And I do think Mark Allen has taken more than a leaf out of the Selby book of success in the last couple of seasons just to make him an even more formidable prospect takes a little bit more time these days over his shots plays the percentages when required well now in the end despite the errors from Selby earlier in the frame it will be former four times world champion who gets the first significant opportunity here. He's probably going to have to play on the black. It's going to be a thin pot, but he seems the most likely colour to follow this red. Yeah, he he's absolutely straight. Can he, in fact, even get on the black from here?
one. And it's quite a good shot, that. The black will definitely cut in. And while it does, the golden ball stays on the table. Thin, as you can see. Black is going up the table. That's a bit of a plot twist. Going Eight. to the green spot. Nine. Nicely played, but it will be the blue next, which will lead to the disappearance of the golden ball. Well avoided the bolt colours. Just looking to see the red two down from the pink. Well, that pot, sometimes the overhead, it does give you a great view, but it's not always that easy to see which balls pass each other. And I suspect it does go, or else he wouldn't be walking around in a, with a view to playing it. Ends there, Five so Selby, 20. disappointing for Selby that he couldn't make a bit more from that chance. Just overcut the red, yes, and the red went pretty comfortably, didn't it? As you saw, so an opportunity for Mark Allen <laughs> coming into this tournament clearly full of confidence after. His success at the Players' Championship beat Zhang Ander in the final for his 11th ranking title. Well, he was the only player that could break the game of Zhang Ander down in the Players' Championship. He proved to be a very difficult opponent for even the likes of John Higgins and Mark Selby, who he basically completely outplayed Zhang Ander. And in the final, there were periods when it looked like he would do the same to Mark Allen, but Allen had the answers to it in the end. Nine. Yes, he's got a red that passes here into that pocket. 
50. A lot of his season was based on winning that shootout. And, you know, if you go with all the trends, then uh, the number one seed wasn't going to win the shootout. Well, that's a oh. very bad shot. I mean, it, Mark Allen, 15. He may think he didn't like to hit the brown, but I think in his heart he'll know that he was never meant to hit the brown ball off that blue. It's quite a bad mistake to make. So being put back in from there. It's been an odd first frame. It's been good safety, very good. But a few errors from both players on the way. A couple of missed pots, a couple of safety shots from Mark Selby, which were played quite poorly, but he didn't get punished for. As mentioned, Luca Brussel and Ali Carter follow this one, the respective winners of the first two matches to play in the semi-finals tomorrow. Of course, the semis and the final all taking place tomorrow, the final over the best of nine frames. In the later session, it's Judd Trump against Sean Murphy first, and then Ronnie O'Sullivan up against John Higgins, who, of course, came through his fellow class of 92 great Mark Williams last evening and came close to having a crack at an unprecedented 167 before losing position on the final yellow. Play there's a shot to nothing there, which he uh, didn't get very close to the pot there. Probably helps sometimes. But in this case, he didn't leave that red on. One. The third shot to nothing was even better. Did see um, a roll up to the yellow yesterday from Ali Carter, which was at very close quarters, which I don't know if it did something at the last second, but he didn't end up getting the snooker. No, he's not taking a risk and rolling up behind the yellow. I wonder if that was, if that was in his mind. Mark Salgin. Not got the snooker. You'd have thought in behind the yellow guaranteed the snooker there with that side of the table all covered. All sorts move there, which is not normally a good sign, and sure enough, Mark Allen will have a chance to get back in. Just trying to think with that last kiss on the red back onto the cue ball. Made things better or worse for Allen. I think possibly the next shot slightly more tricky than it could be. A trickier. A pretty tactical and a little scrappy opening frame. With a lot to play for in it still.
three. Eleven. Twelve. I think we should say that his first red in this break didn't look much, but he was able to get on the black to get the black back onto its own 19. spot, so it was very beneficial to do so. Tread. Put him in a position now. We're in a low scoring frame. He can get himself into a good position, good, good lead. A few more will be required, though. Mark Selby. Took on a tough long red. Didn't get it. It was an excellent initial pot from Allen. 25. But the hard work really starts now in terms of the awkwardness of the reds he's going to require to clinch the frame at this visit. He said the angle to play it around two cushions is closer now to the black. But he'll still need black, red, black and one more colour to secure the frame. And there's a left-hander. If you can just get top side of that left-hand red. 33. Then he can roll it down the cushion. So that's three shots along the line. So on the cast, but still requiring, as 41. Neil mentioned, one more red to make the frame safe. Yeah, might play the double here, but doesn't know where the red's going to go. Should he miss it? <coughs> Always in the lap of the gods, oh, really, on a shot 41. like that. Although he played it, he got lucky to leave it where the cube was finished. It was a way of winning the frame at that visit. the shot though for Selby to get the other red back in play which makes the frame a little more open than the scoreboard suggests
very good shot. A delicate shot to play. Fallon pots the next red, it's surely over this frame. Selby would need a snooker to tie. But nothing particularly safe, so wary of the fact that if Selby gets in next, he could pinch the frame. Plays one of his specials. And Mike Allen is in trouble. Yes, he's got a good lead, but that will not count for a lot if he leaves a red on at the end of this visit. Because the balls are in pretty good position. I guess green, pink next to each other could be a problem for someone chasing the frame. In this case, called Selby. I only think that he tried to hit the red by the blue because initially I thought he was going to try and play to hit the red down close to the bolt cushion, but he never got near to that one at any point. So, neither one thing nor t'other there. Yeah, Mark. It's a difficult shot because he's looking to play to glance a thin edge, a sort of inside edge of the red by the blue, which is not really an easy shot to play. He could miss this a number of times. If he overcompensates, he hits it full ball and then anything could happen. So it's quite a bit of trouble he's in here. table from Selby and he's got a shot at this ready by no means easy and you can see from that angle how difficult it looks
Very good pop. Very good pop. Now a chance because of that good safety shot, which put Alan in a lot of trouble. Six. It was just under a year ago that Selby last lifted a trophy, the WST Classic, as mentioned, in Leicester. His 22nd ranking title. Made the final of the British Open this season. Three other semi-final appearances. This will be a great frame to steal. Alan certainly Seven. looked favourite at one stage. He's got the problem, hasn't he, of getting on the green, though, from here, from yellow to green. Looks to be a difficult shot to me. It will depend on the angle on the yellow that he's left with. He'll probably try and get on the green into the same pocket as Twelve. the yellow, but he's got to hit this perfectly pace wise. Fourteen. And he nearly chipped the green ball in behind the brown and pink, but he played it well. I think he had to get close to it on that shot. So this would be a real steal because, quite honestly, he hasn't really been in the frame for the most part. It was the terrific snooker he laid behind the black that set him up to get back into this frame. Alan eventually getting out of it, but Selby knocked in a great initial red. Now, where's this cue ball going to end up? Not ideal. Oh, far from it. He almost like screwed it instead of stunned it across. Won't go in there, but the uh, probability is you're trying to put it into the yellow pocket. The opposite top pocket. shot coming up then. And very well played by Mark Selby. He needs pink and black. Help that he's stretching. He might need to put an extension on the queue, or maybe he's already done that. So he's kind of screwing back towards the black if he's not careful. He wants to be one side of it or the other. Well, he'll be happy enough two. with that shot, and he'd be delighted to have stolen this frame if this black goes in. These tight frames always feel that little bit more significant than the ones won with big breaks particularly in a short best of seven frame match like this. So this black for a big steal for And in it goes. That's an important blow to strike for the four times world champion. Mark Allen was in control of that frame, but it was a great snooker that Selby laid behind the black that turned it his way. And so Mark Selby off the mark first in our first quarter final here at the Riyadh season World Masters of Snooker. He leads. Mark Allen, 1 0. Day two of three of the Riyadh Thank Season you, World Masters fan. of Snooker. Quarterfinals Myself. day, of course. The initial field of 12 now down to eight players. The winner of Mark Selby and Mark Allen. First up today to play the winner of our next match here Luca Brussel, world champion, and Ali Carter. And then later, it's Judd Trump against Sean Murphy and Ronnie O'Sullivan against John Higgins. What a lineup for this second day. And for Mark Allen, an early test of uh, his increasingly impressive resilience because he'll feel he should have won that opening frame. It was a terrific snooker that Mark Selby lay behind the black that turned the tide. Amber Haas just giving the cue ball the polish. 
Alan spotting something on it. So can he bounce back in this second frame? Well, that's a great way to start. What a superb bit of queuing that was. Yeah, and the good thing, aside from the pot, which was tremendous, is the, the angle on the black to get these reds opened up. Absolutely perfect. There's always the danger of that, though, isn't there? Screwing out of the bunch rather than through the bunch. Just sit Eight. back. And, uh, I don't think there's anything available to him. Just a reminder that the golden ball is only potable when a maximum break has been achieved. So if it's potted prior to that, it's a foul. And if a maximum can't be achieved, the ball is removed from the table. Alan was up very quickly there. He knew that red wasn't finding its destination. And Jan Verhas duly removing the golden ball. Mark Allen is considering trying to pop the red off the blue. He's certainly having a look at it, but now he, last second, shook his head. But might be the red to left middle off the blue is possible here. Handy little knuckle on the top right pocket there. When uh, the it becomes frustrating when you actually get that close to a pot that you think he's going to be a shot to nothing. It turns out not to be because it's near the pocket. Yeah, a little smattering Four. of applause. If it's not straight, it'd be okay. Yes, it's got a slight angle to play with. Mark Salving, four. Well, as you saw, extra pace and not exactly pinpoint accuracy is the reason that he didn't pull it.
looking at a place down in bulk where he can make things difficult for Alan. Putting that cue ball there. Well, it's not that easy to find full cover on the red that's close to the left middle. Somewhere down in behind the yellow, that kind of area, I don't think the red is cuttable. He's not trying that. He's trying to get back to where the black is now instead with that cue ball. Clever and completely as played. He, he didn't play the pollock directly. Just brought about a chance and not very much. Mark Allen became only the tenth player in the game's history to make in excess of 600 century breaks this season. He's made 36 in all this campaign. like he was going to win frame one he couldn't quite convert the couple of chances that he had earlier in the frame so he's gonna to have to ensure that this time he does having got him with a good red make it into a, a pretty telling break Quite a poor shot, but he still could recover Seven. things because of where the blue is. He can pop the red into the bottom left pocket. The hold for the blue, so he's got nothing to do positionally with this shot. Shot, and it's nicely played. 
It um, wasn't a good position to attempt the previous one, but now it's just a question of how many you can make. Thirty-one. That'll annoy him. Very good shot to get onto the black. Now this red to middle. This is very missable. You can see it's not the nicest angle. Nowhere near it. Nowhere near Mark it. Allen, Thirty-one. So another chance. Someone sure squandered the there. On silent, please. Thank you. First frame would certainly have irritated Allen to lose it from a position of strength. This would be even more frustrating for him were Mark Selby to turn this one around. He looked to have done the hard work in regaining position only to then lose it again. One. Yeah, I mean, this could take a similar pattern to the previous frame. Looks like, uh, I don't know if the black goes through that gap, it may well do, but you can see that it will go. Blue's a bit straight to get onto a red from. <laughs> right as he was on the backswing there. I think there is a point on the backswing where you really would be put off by something. And that was that point, but... Thankfully, when he got down again, he didn't miss it. Eight. Quite a big margin for error there. Anywhere behind the black gave him the shot at the red. 40. So into the four reds here. This is a very important shot in the context of this frame. If you can get these reds in play. Cubal's the problem. The reds have opened up. <clears throat> From there, the next shot is not easy. Very nice queuing, that one.
28. Shelby's still, be still behind, but not for long, it would seem. The two reds are absolutely stuck together in the middle of the table, so it might be available to uh, perhaps one of the bolt pockets, not much else. Thirty-five. Scores level. Fifty-one remaining. Very nice. Very clean pot from Selby. In his bid for a second consecutive steal. Yeah, and it'll be back on that uh, left-hand red where the frame will hinge, getting onto it. Possibilities Four. here. Not quite got the angle on the pink to screw in behind the red, but I'm sure he's playing the cannon here. Probably off two cushions rather than the one, I think. So he's tried, beautiful shot. Absolutely top class. And things looking a little grim for Mark Allen again. Seemingly in control of the frame and then lost prime position. Missed the awkward red to the left centre. And it looks like costing him. 17 the lead, so just this blue, the yellow and the green for 2-0. This has been very nicely done, though, from Selby. Excellent red to the green pocket from distance. That very well-played positional shot on the final red. Sixty-two. Yep, and... Uh, there's a habit in this game of you lose a frame in a certain way early in a match and you can lose more frames in a similar vein. And this really was Six. another one that got away from Mark Allen. Arguably should be 2-0 up, but he isn't. Seventy-one. Allen was 4-1 down to Selby at the Masters this season and turned it around in a decider. So there's still time for him, clearly, but... It's the manner in which he's lost these frames that will hurt because, as Neil says, he could certainly have won them both, but Mark Selby has been clinical when it's mattered at the end of the frames. And that was a superb break. It really was top class from the four times world champion Mark Selby looking to avenge that Masters loss earlier this season and going very nicely about it right now. He's halfway to a place in the semi-finals and leads... Mark Allen here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker by two frames to nil. And he'll be playing Ali Carter, as mentioned, next up. The winner of that to play the winner of this. And Mark Allen having a few words with referee Jan Verhas with work to do because he's lost two frames to Mark Selby that he might have won. But Selby has played extremely well at the back end of both of them. Thank Let's you. Take a 2-0 lead. Mark Allen to Four, of course, is the target for a place in the semi-finals, which take place tomorrow. They're also over the best of seven frames. The final tomorrow evening over the best of nine to collect that bumper first prize of a quarter of a million pounds. And that's without mentioning the seven, which can bank you 395,000 if you can make a maximum and then pot the golden ball worth 20. John Higgins had a very good stab at it yesterday. Lost position on the final yellow, actually overcut the yellow, which seemed almost impossible from where he landed on it. But plenty more opportunities for it to happen. Yeah, it was a pity, wasn't it, looking back at that, that he didn't get on the yellow. Now, it, I'm not saying he would have made one because the pink was awkward. Of course, the golden ball is where it is now. But uh, nice to think he could have got 
down to the last couple of shots anyway that would be very exciting but of course there's still plenty of time for that to happen Sullivan has claimed that he'll be going for it in his matches if there is to be more than one match of course got a tough game against John Higgins later too certainly a match to savour Yes, yeah, so Sullivan v Higgins is some way to complete the menu for today, isn't it? Before that, it'll be Judd Trump against Sean Murphy. Of course, we're talking about the cream of the crop in this event. The top ten players, plus the two wild cards who were in action yesterday. Mark Allen currently the world number three. Mark Selby the world number five. Keller must be a little bit worried about the way this match is going because he's kind of drawn out Fox, uh, sort of most tactically astute player we've got probably, and he's kind of doing it but still losing the frames because he's not scoring quite enough when he's in to make it happen. Golden ball's pretty obstinate, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's threatened to be moved a couple of times. It's going to be moved in a minute, that's for sure. It's going to be moved back off the table. <laughs> because there's no way he can put a black from, from here. But I know what you're saying. I think the problem is it's actually put very tight on the cushion. So even if a ball does hit it, it's almost going to double kiss. And it's not going far unless there's a, an unusual early few shots in a frame. Now, just to make the point, he couldn't just play it now. You can't actually play it as a colour. Mark Allen won. Uh, which, of course, he would have done, I think, if that was in the, the, the rules, because he would have... Left the keyboard there. I think Mark Selby is actually just clarifying the rule that oh, yeah. Neil has mentioned there that the only time that the golden ball is an object ball is when a maximum has been made. Up until then, you can't play it without uh, conceding a foul. Yeah, it's not a ball on, I think was the answer, and that is one of the sort of rules of snooker the ball on being once a red is probably one of six colours, not seven. There will be a time, I'm sure, when it, it comes into play at the start of a frame in a different way. Because clearly, if you know, if it was moved from there and all, all the reds remain, you could probably get a snooker behind it. I'm not sure exactly under what circumstances that would happen, but it, because all the reds would have to be on the table, it would have to have already been nudged. But I'm sure something will happen this week like that. Maybe it will be the ball on after 147 points in a break have been made. Well, there's uh, further clarification of the rules applicable to the brand new golden ball worth 20. I mean, it can be a hindrance if your cue ball lands on top of it at the start of a frame, I suppose, and you've got to play out of a difficult uh, bridging. So we just get that cue ball to limp up the table. He didn't get uh, 
the correct contact on the thin red he was trying to hit. Rare safety error from Selby and a chance for Allen. And it's very important now, this visit for Mark Allen. He's seen two frames come and go that he might have won. Selby playing very well at the end of each of them to deny him. What can he make of this opportunity? One thing that Mark Allen has shown during this period of sustained success, five titles in the last season and a half or so, is that patience when things have not gone to plan. He's hung on in there. And more often than not, he's been rewarded. We think back to the UK final last season when he was 6-1 down to Ding Xiongui. Turned it around, only lost one more frame in that match. He's come from behind a number of times during his winning run. So you certainly wouldn't bet against him doing it again, but it's not quite happening for him so far today. There's still time. Four. No, because he's winning much of the safety exchanges early in a frame. Anyway, this red will go. But he isn't quite punishing. Five. That last exchange, Selby only had to miss one ball on that right side on the way back up and that was a green which he hit quite a lot of from his point of view I think he could do with a sizable break here to really 12. avoid any reoccurrence of losing the first two frames while being outplayed in the second half of both of them 13 Twenty-one. Twenty nine. Well, a 
question of whether it goes on there. If not, it goes not. Yeah, he's saying it does go, Jan Verhaas, so it doesn't go up on the brown, which would have been the highest available had it not spotted. Okay. Black goes, as you can see, after this, so that really is... there'll be no excuse for Mark Allen not to get this frame one here. It's a golden chance. Forty three. Forty four. Little shake of the head there before that last shot. <coughs> Seems okay though where he is. Fifty-one. Little shot to run round off two cushions for the black. Fifty-two. Nicely done. So neatly done. Still seventy-five on. So red, black, or red, lower value colour, red from here. Now that black has been potted anyway. 59. 60. <clears throat> Just a bit of positional work to do off this blue then with one more red required to make the frame safe. Yeah, I think initially he wanted to play on the black from that last red, but he didn't have the angle. Has he finished in the one place where nothing goes, or does the red is close to Does he nip through the gap? Shake of the head from Alan would suggest the former. Does that end a break? tantalizingly close to winning his first frame yeah and Selby will not have given up this frame even though it's unlikely just needs one red plan the plant by the looks of this well you know that's a terrific shot it's a very clever shot because the cue ball was running away from all the the reds and all the action it's almost like a billiards in off red on two Something on the black spot. Beautiful shot, that. Very clever. Frame winner. Black to make sure. Selby, of course, will play on if this doesn't go in. But this has been a really good response from Mark Allen. And that superbly 73. manufactured plant has got him on the scoreboard rather later than he would have liked. But he's now in the match. And Mark Selby concedes Mark with Allen. only 59 left on the table. So Mark Allen with his first substantial break of the afternoon. Back in the hunt here, reducing Mark Selby's lead to two frames to one. Quarter final here on day two, live from Boulevard City, the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. All four quarterfinals coming your way today. Tremendous lineup of snooker to determine the last four players standing ahead of the semi finals and indeed the title match all to be played tomorrow. Mark Selby still in front, but only by one. An excellent break and a vital intervention from Mark Allen, who could have won the first two frames. Mark Selby finishing them strongly from behind. But Allen coming to the party in frame three. Break of 74 to halve the deficit. Rather an odd break that, wasn't it? Because we saw uh, the red go up the table, as we sometimes see, but then double kissing with the cue ball. That's not a break you see very often. It's not necessarily been that costly, but just an unusual start to a frame seeing a shot like that.
I tried, said Alan, Alan <laughs> talking about moving the golden ball, which, uh, apart from when it's been removed by the referee, has stubbornly refused to budge so far in the matches we've seen. little nudge on the brown balls good pop to start with but often this cube will just drift into the bulk area without an easy pot available but that half ball kiss on the brown has allowed him a chance to make a break He'd love to get on the red just by the black just above it don't think he had the shot to do it there but the red above the black planning behind that freeing the black to both pockets see him off again six that's a better shot than it looked to finish top side of the blue just landing right behind the blue very nicely done Now trying to play on that red I mentioned, just on line with the black there, and that's looking good. So all of a sudden Mark Allen is looking slightly more dangerous in amongst them in the last frame in a bit. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. He's trying to find an area here where he can get onto one of those two reds below and to the left of the black spot. So that he brings the other one into play. Yeah, that's okay. Just a very slight angle. The red next to the cue ball then... 35. ...is uh, almost a target ball to pot soon. Thirty-six. He could go into the bunch of reds here if he really wanted to. That's a lovely shot. Screwed out to the left. He knew reds would be available. That were already in open play. Very neatly played that shot. One of our features on Discovery Plus during the commercial breaks, talking about Mark Allen and his temperament. Rachel Casey Four. asking the questions, and he said, much improved from what it used to be. Talked about how sometimes his fiery character could get the better of him, but I think this match is an example of how things have changed in that regard. Those first two frames could really have hurt because he'll feel he should have won both of them, but. He's not allowed it to phase him. He backs himself 49. to turn things around when he gets the chance. And this match suddenly has a different complexion about it. Excellent 73 break in the previous frame. And looking good to level things pretty quickly here in the fourth. 50. I 
And he did something similar, of course, to Selby this season. At the Masters, 4-1 behind, being outplayed. The maximum break was obviously a fantastic contribution, but more importantly for Allen, he turned the match around and won it 6-5. There's a similar scenario beginning to unfold 56. here. Yeah, I know. It kind of does feel like that, doesn't it? It's a similar sort of pattern. I mean, Selby's 4-1 lead was not entirely convincing that that evening. And certainly the comeback from Allen was a little bit more positive, and you saw it coming, actually, when they got level. Although, he's not going to get the frame one there. Goodness, that was a mile oh, out. 56. 56, decent break. But this was a, a serious miscalculation. Does the red pass the black? That's the question. Well, I don't think it'll be in a full pocket, but if it does go and... Uh, Selby plays it and gets it, then he's right back into the frame. We might get a chance to see it. No, we're not, it's not going anyway. And that's a bit of a lucky break for Alan, because having missed the black, he might have begun to imagine a similar scenario to the first couple of frames, which Selby won from behind. As it is just the safety from Selby, but he'll be happy to still be in the frame. It was looking likely that Allen was going to level at that visit before he missed the black. The only good thing for Selby is he has moved the only safe red into open play, so he'll still fancy there's a way back into the frame. Beautiful safety shot this time from Allen cement his position in the frame even more. Again, another nice pop. But there's still 67 left on the table. Five reds, five blacks, all the colours. So we'll need another red to secure the frame. that black is the question I reckon that will go but even then over the top of a red with queuing uh, is it a risk that Mark Allen is prepared to take Mark Allen acutely aware that there's still jeopardy in this frame. <gasps> Clearly very much the favourite at the moment, but that can change pretty quickly. Oh. 
turn here, actually. I think he played this. I mean, he... It's a very thin shot to nothing if he did play it. But the cue ball came out of bulk, so... He's just got to keep an eye on the point situation here. Taking the brown, he's looking at the scoreboard. He can't really take yellow. Brown is, I think, the minimum. Don't think the black <coughs> from there cuts him very easily. Not with a view to hold him for the next red. Maybe he feels that it will pop. Well, he's got to make sure the cue ball doesn't travel up the table here. A little kiss on the red next to it would be handy. Now look at the brown. He must have thought it was a good angle to come down for red. Eight. Because he could afford to take the brown points-wise as long as he took high value colours with everything else. Here's a big shot. Well now. What a turnaround in, in the offing here. Just when it looked as though Alan was about to restore parity and having lost the first two frames, having been in front, this would be an even more crushing blow. It would also put Selby two up with three to play if he could clear up here. Big, big moment in the match. Well, put it this way, I, I think he would be very 16. disappointed not to clear up from here because there isn't anything difficult other than the fact that it's a valuable event and it's a chance to make it through to the semi-finals. The pressure of that is the only issue. And he, he'd like to take Seven. as high a value of colour as he could with the other red down the table so that he can afford to take some lower value on the red up by the yellow. So 39 the difference. If he takes red black here, he can afford 20. Take a blue with the other red. 24. Also brown. So it's making a huge difference. If he can play on the brown, that would help him a lot. It means he's staying at the other end. Seems to happen very quickly, doesn't it? This frame was all Mark Allen. All of a sudden, Selby's 31. got this chance to win it. Allen missed the black to the left corner when he was 32. closing in on two each. He was beginning to queue really well, having made 73 in the previous frame. The match had a different complexion, but things have turned again now. Mark Selby threatening his third smash and grab of the afternoon. Well, Mark Allen had two chances to win the frame. One when he made that half-century break, and then another chance case way, but he was left queuing awkwardly, possibly to play a red into maybe half a pocket, and he didn't fancy any of that. The opening red that Selby took was terrific. And here we are. 41. 45. The last three colours required for another damaging steal from Mark Allen's point of view. So the one way that shot can go wrong is if you don't quite get the angle, but he's a little bit further away from this pink than he would want. It's dead straight, so he's got to sort of run it in. Should get it, but it's the last possible thing that could go wrong. Choosing to play the stun run 50. through instead, he was more comfortable with that. So what a steal this is going to be. It was looking highly likely to be two each. Mark Allen was going nicely, queuing well. Mr. Black missed a further opportunity, and Mark Selby 
has punished him again for the third time this afternoon he comes from behind and that one is the most significant of the lot because it puts him on the cusp of a semi-final place here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. He needs just one more frame to knock out Mark Allen and move through to the last four and a meeting with either Luca Brussel or Ali Carter. Thank you, frame five. Mark Allen to win. Mark Allen at the point of no return. Mark Selby with another punishing steal. His third of the afternoon when Allen was looking good for two each. Now he's got to win the remaining three. Selby just needing the one to go through to the semi-finals in a meeting with either Luca Brasil or Ali Carter and the shake of the head from Mark Allen will tell you he's left this red for Selby into the centre pocket. Selby's unorthodox break-off in the previous frame didn't prove costly, but that one from Mark Allen might be. Yeah, he's sort of, sort of sitting a little bit back in that chair now. A little deflated, I think. He's not lost yet, but this is really the first frame Selby's been in early in, so... Uh, Eight. Despite the fact that Keeble's kind of clung to the bunch. He's hoping to keep this going here. Amazing that uh, this best of seven frame match is the first that either player has won, but the winner will be on a minimum of 75,000, isn't it? Goodness. It's already, but it's uh, a sizable amount. But you have got the very best players in the world here. So uh, it's a tough score. 60. Yeah, I mean. The thing with Mark Selby, he's always been someone that could steal frames. It's something he's well known for, but this match has been a, an example of that. A couple of them, Mark Allen probably should have put them away before the counter-attack ever came. 21. Selby has certainly produced some <clears throat> fine snooker in patches this season. It's been putting it together for an entire tournament that's eluded him so far. Runner-up at the British Open at the start of the campaign. Semi-finalist at the recent Players' Championship after undoubtedly his performance of the season in whitewashing. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 6 nearly played superbly. Couldn't quite replicate that form against Zhang in the last four, losing a decider. So it's still searching for that extra two or three percent that will carry him to another title nearly a year after he won his 22nd ranking crown and of course this is the time of the season where you want to be peaking with the world championship in mind couldn't have got much closer to winning a fifth last season of course outlasting mark allen in the semi-final epic before the big fight back in the final session against Luca Brasil, which was ultimately in vain. But his game absolutely tailor-made for Sheffield, so Selby will be one of those players for sure, who's fancied in just over a month's time. He'd love to go there with a trophy already bagged. Well, he's not done much damage there in the bunch. He looked at the pig. 35. He appeared the pig was very tight, actually. I'd like to have played that, but... Uh, so it looks as if it's not going to happen in one visit. Maybe a bit unlucky not to just... nudge a red out and put it into... a potable position. Mark Selby. 
35. A handy lead, but Mark Allen will be relieved to be still in the match. Just a reminder, it's Luca Brussel against Ali Carter to follow this match in our second quarter final. The respective winners to play in the semis tomorrow. And a fantastic later session in store as well with Judd Trump taking on Sean Murphy. Trump, the best player of the season in terms of the ranking events. Of course, he's won four of them. Over 120,000 points clear of his nearest rival, Ronnie O'Sullivan, on the one-year list. Sean Murphy has actually had a disappointing season after a great start when he won the Championship League. He's lost in six first rounds this season, Murphy, in ranking tournaments. So he's looking for a spark before the World Championship. Chance for Selby to get back in here. And that's very well played. That's a really good pot from Selby. Tight to the top rail, not easy. No, it really was a good shot. You're absolutely right. Just drop it in. And uh, offering up another opportunity here. And then, of course, after Trump and Murphy, it's the small matter of O'Sullivan and Higgins. What a way to complete the quarterfinal menu today. The semis and the final coming tomorrow. Well, he took a, a little bit of a gamble there. And he's on that red well. Six. I can't imagine he played on that red. I'm sure he played into the bunch there. Couldn't have hit those any better, Selby. Might have been concerned just for a moment about the red heading towards the right corner, but no danger in the end. Absolutely terrific, wasn't it? Uh, of course, if you could, if, the only way it could have gone better is if that red didn't go over the pocket and the black was available to the opposite. But as you say, it could have gone into the pocket. Still got pink. It's not really a problem. Y you would think... It's not, nothing's conclusive yet, but that brown into the bunch, which wasn't his first time in the frame trying to nudge reds out, is a very decisive blow. Mark Allen just got a glimpse of him there in his chair, warming his hands with his uh, cup of hot water. I think it's been a frustrating afternoon for him because... He had chances in the first four frames. I feel he should have won certainly three of them, including the all-important fourth when he was looking good for two each. Missed that black and Selby came up with a fine clearance to deny him. And now things very much out of his hands. Selby getting close to booking his place in the last four. Yeah, playing this ready, just got to make sure he gets the cue ball out onto the black. Sometimes you can sort of almost trap the cue ball on these shots, so it doesn't go very far. It wasn't over the pocket though, which Mate. helped. So, it's not dissimilar to the black that Ali Carter missed yesterday, when in command against Ding Jun Wei. End up winning, but a lot later on in the piece. It's this sort of shot he missed. Exactly the same thing has happened. Marcel. Exactly that shot 19. is the one Carter missed. In that way. A 
amazing, really. Selby hangs his head. And it presents Mark Allen with a chance of turning the tables on Selby and stealing a frame. He looked likely to lose, and with it, the match. There is hint of a rueful grim from Selby. That was virtually match ball, wasn't it? Well, he's completely controlling that frame, and he isn't now. So Mark Eight. Allen probably owes him three frames that he could steal, and of course now he has to do it anyway, or else the match is over. got to go into the three reds in the pink here especially while there is one red sticking out Fourteen. and to try to work out from his expression if he's on that red or if the pink's in the way well, it's a bit unfortunate not to be on it Yeah, that one fell in off the jaw. That was a shot he was staying down on, unsure as to whether it would drop. Selby so, cannot stop thinking about the black he missed. Twenty. Well, it's a frame of changing emotions. Mark <laughs> Allen was sitting back in his chair thinking maybe he was on the way out. Now, the other Mark, Selby, is uh, looking pretty deflated, quite honestly. Because when he broke the reds open off the brown, hard to think that he wouldn't win the match there. 28th. Very nicely played. Didn't look much, but finishing there on the blues makes everything so much easier positionally. Thirty-four. It's been a match full of shifts in momentum. Mark Selby, for all the world, was looking like a 4-1 winner just now. Mr. Black, you saw his reaction. 35. Mark Allen's turn to inflict a bit of pain in clearing up to keep the match alive when it looked as though he was heading home. 38. And if he does do that, you could say that four. four of the five frames played have been won by the player who was very much second favourite to do so. Forty-three. He's got to be a, a little careful here because obviously not to snooker himself behind the black, but he doesn't want too much angle on the, the pink either that he can't hold for the black. 52. Well, surely not. And that was the point, you know, it looked very simple. Oh, he can get through, I think. I think he can get through there. The trace, a little minute trace of left-hand side. I think that's on. He was very concerned for a moment, wasn't he? Well, 
He certainly got Mark Selby excited there. But I don't feel there was ever any doubt he could just sneak through. This then for 3 2. Mark Allen's turn to steal a frame and in the process keep his hopes alive. Mark Selby, for all the world, was looking as though he was going through there by four frames to one. He missed a relatively routine black and it's come back to bite. Selby still in front, but only by three frames to two. He still needs one here at the Riyadh season. World Masters of Snooker for a place in the last four. Our opening quarterfinal here at the Riyadh season, World Masters of Snooker. That was the black that cost Mark Selby when he was very close to clinching victory just now against Mark Allen and a 4-1 success. He's got to do it all Six over frame. again now. Allen clearing up impressively, having three times this afternoon had frames pinched from his own pocket by Selby. It's been that kind of afternoon. Frames one against the head. Selby still needs one. Mark Allen now needs two after that 56 clearance to stay alive. The winner to play the Luca Brussel, the world champion, or Ali Carter, who beat Ding Wee yesterday. They're coming up at the conclusion of this match. Later on, Sean Murphy takes on the player of the season, Judd Trump, followed by Ronnie O'Sullivan against John Higgins. Attempt at the double then. Very close. Must have had a few people um, sending me a message on social media just about the possibility of free ball and the, the 147. But of course, no golden ball. Would they bring it back on? I think the answer is no. It's a bit like if a free ball with 14 minutes left was taken and it was 147. It would be a 147, but not a maximum, and I think it's got to be after a maximum. So, yeah, the answer is it won't be put back on the table under those circumstances. It's got to be with 15 reds and 15 blacks at the start of a frame. Of course, the rule is new to all of us. That is something different, isn't it? A number of talking points. Some excitement last night with John Higgins getting to the colours, to, to the yellow, with the chance to put seven more balls to make one. I'm sure someone else will get close or even do it over the course of the next day and a half. Well, the match started very tactically. There was a, a, a re-rack almost as soon as we did get underway. First frame or two, quite safety orientated. <laughs> then it got opened up a little bit. But now things are getting more tense. Then maybe we're going back to a more tactical <laughs> snooker match because these two are very good at playing in that way. But also the tension doesn't allow such a free flowing match very often.
certainly a good cue ball was underneath that uh, black cushion there which means Mark Selby's going to have to really dig down to get the cue ball back in that kind of area. Well, that was uh, certainly Mark Selby won in that battle. Keeble not getting back to bolt. What a chance for Selby again. One. Well, can he put aside the disappointments of not winning the match in the previous frame when he looked sure to do so? This is black from its spot. Very similar to the one Ali Carter missed. Missed it in the same way. Carter eventually still won the match against Ding Junhui yesterday. <coughs> Eight. But that was uh, when Carter led 3-1, but it ended up a very nervy affair on the colours in the deciding frame until he got the job done. Nine. It's been a match of frames... <coughs> where the person making the running has not won them. Just apart from one of the frames Alan won. <coughs> Selby wants to ensure no more repeat of that. What a chance this is. Don't know if the pink will go on its own spot. If it goes up on to the blue, that would be even better. 15. Not the case. Six. Selby has lost four final Thank frame you. deciders this season, including, of course, Mark Allen at the Masters. So he'll be very keen to get this match won here and now without need of a seventh and final frame. What a chance it is. It's hard to imagine he'd get a better one. Searching. Still a great chance, isn't it? Even though he's got just a bit of work to do now. All those reds up the table. The ones on the right are scattered a little bit awkwardly. 
I mean, they're in play, but they're slightly in the way of each other. Blend that nicely. 35. All the time, chipping away, building a lead. It's not a great shot. I mean, he probably still fancy potting it. 41. Similar to the black, he, he didn't really want to be there, and maybe just a little bit of nerves creeping in. I expect him to get this, but it, it could be missed. 42. Cube a little bit close to the left cushion, he's just edging out of position ever so slightly. This black is certainly tougher than the one he missed to the opposite corner in the previous frame. And he's missed it again. Would you believe it? Mark Selby, 42. Well, this will infuriate Selby. He's always been a great finisher in the past. He's been clinical. You have to be when you've won as much as he has, including four world championships, but not today. Another gilt edge chance to close the match out has slipped through Selby's fingers. Is it going to come back to haunt him? Well, it will hurt if it does, because Mark Allen's got a lot to do here. Yes, he's at the table. He's 42 behind when he came to it, but uh, it's quite a hard chance. And it's certainly a way back into the frame, at least. Just felt he was getting further out of position. Never too badly, but that blackie should never have been near the cushion on it, Selby. Six. I think the effects of the last frame are still there. The one that he should have won to clinch the match 4-1. Sorry, I'll get it for you. <laughs> then you rest at one end of the table. But on this table here. Quite a nervy affair. I think we're going to see a number of those today with the amount of money up for grabs for winning. Thank you. Very well played, although the Seven. brown going so clearly is against him. Thirteen. Bit straight on this, which means he's uh, slightly limited in what he can do with it. You can see just the slightest angle. I mean, he, if you could nudge that red right out, all well and good. That one to the right of shot. Eighteen. 
not sure what he played there. Presumably to move that red into play, but it wasn't that easy to take into an open position, the one that he did play into. Played the cannon here, played the cannon. Superb shot. Exactly as played. And this is a delightful shot to bring the safe red into play this time. Well, Selby will now start to have some concerns as to the way this match is turned around. The red by the pink is still going to be something to worry about. The brown going safe. If any more of these balls are potted, then Selby's going to need the brown himself. the effort to refuse the, an easier green in playing this one yellow now he's not on the red very nicely to middle I wonder if he'd consider playing to pot the black and nudge the red and the pink into play here. I think the red looks safe. Certainly into most pockets. Does he play the cannon on the red and the pink? Oh, he does. Looks a superb shot to me. Can he get through to it? I'm sure there's a chance he can. That was very good. Two of the cannons he's made in this break have been of the highest quality. Forty-one. Well, of course, the problem of putting the brown is still there. Forty-two. And of course, it's not a question of just putting the brown because he'll still need to play from brown to blue. So it's not cut and dried. But Mark Forty-seven. Cullen, Clears up here. And acting to play the cannon, it's not 50. gone as well as it might have done, though. Absolutely right. I mean, this is uh, by no means an easy shot. It's a horrible shot to cut that back in and come round the table. You just get the feeling if this doesn't go in, it stays over the pocket. Certainly been a match high on drama. Almost all of the frames have had twists and turns in them, only one, one cleanly, emphatically by Mark Allen. 50. So just the safety, a reprieve 50. for Mark Selby. He can still win this match without the need of a 
nerve shredding decider. I certainly feel he should have won it already, though, with the chances he's had. Can he now block that out and get the job done? That's not gone to plan by any stretch. Selby's suffering now. He's thinking, I'm sure, about the two blacks that he's missed when he was looking good for victory. Yeah, but by the same token, Selby's shot was not good, yes. Mark Allen knows that if he, this is not simple and it could be his last shot if he leaves it on. <laughs> not the kiss he was looking for. Four. Now does he play this again? It could be his last shot. One thing Mark Allen has never lacked is bottle. Always prepared to take the tough shot on, even if there's risk attached. And this is for three each and a decider. <sighs> Couldn't have got any closer, and happily for Alan, it's run Back safe. Well, it's another dramatic match, isn't it? The way that it's shaping up, like the ones yesterday that we saw. This was very close. Hitting it that pace was the reason it stayed out. Selby might be able to play a meaningful safety shot here. Obviously, priority blue safe. Cube, though, twice across in behind the black will be his way of going here. No. Didn't get that. Priority, as I said, always object ball, very safe. behind the pink will do very nicely. Oh, miss. Mark Selby, fuck. What do you do here? Have the balls replaced? Yeah. Yeah, he thought about just playing the blue along the cushion is a natural to finish on the pink. I wonder what Mark Allen would have preferred. You'd expect him to do a little bit of the snooker this time. Oh, I'm gonna miss. Mark Selby, five. Well, he did do better, but he still hasn't hit it. And the more you see of this shot from the angle we are looking at now, he's actually quite close to the jaws of the right middle pocket. In front of the angle, he's sliding off the jaw, sliding off the cushion. See how close he goes to the middle pocket here. Very close. This time a better shot. Oh, pretty good shot. I think he, he didn't mind getting the blue out there because he realised the blue is not enough for Mark Allen now he's giving those penalties away. He'll need the pink also. Mm. Mark Selby has got no choice but to take this on. Basically, match ball, I think. Not the first chance he's had to win the match, but a very decisive one, this. Long 
way off. Plenty of pressure out there. This is a big, big money event, remember. Guaranteed £25,000 riding on this match alone. The winner to get at least 75000 Well, there's a lot of tension, you know that much. This is an event which uh, has only come about in the last couple of months. But there seems to be a lot riding on this first edition of the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker. He's bringing some very close matches to us, pretty enthralling ones as well. feeling whoever puts the blue should win the frame. He's looking to play this blue onto the black just to stop the blue from coming anywhere out towards the pocket. But he hasn't succeeded in doing that. Another chance then for Mark Allen to take this match the distance. up quickly that's normally a bad sign over cutting the blue it is very nervy now understandably there's a lot at stake Once again, just making sure the blue goes safe. Of course, Mark Allen missing that blue to right corner a few shots back. He got lucky. He got lucky not to leave it. He was lost all control of the situation, missing the pot. Blue went to safety. Can he get through to the potting angle this time? 
sure to be on the pink, as it happens on this occasion. But you might still take the pot on on the blue. You'd need the three colours, Selby, to be sure of clinching frame and match. If he pots blue and pink, Alan could still tie with the black, but you've got to think if he can pot the blue, he'll be in pole position to finally get this match done and dusted. The match he'll know he should have won already. It would be a hurtful loss for sure if he doesn't win. Can he knock this blue in? Just the safety. Yeah, I mean, I get the feeling he, he couldn't pot it because he looked at it a lot of times. Is it safe? It certainly isn't. Yet another opportunity for Mark Allen to take us all the way. No mistake this time, and there was an air of inevitability with Mark Selby missing the gilt edge chances that he had with those two missed blacks into the opposite corner pockets that we would go the distance, and that's where we're headed. What a dramatic match this has been. What a way to start quarterfinals day here at the Riyadh Season World Masters of Snooker, and it's down to a one-frame shootout. All to play for. Mark Allen three, Mark Selby three. All right, with Mark Allen winning the duel Thank on you. the final, the final frame. blue and Mark slotting Allen. in the pink to take us to this final decisive frame. The prize for the winner, of course, a guaranteed £75,000. Not bad for one best of seven frame victory and a meeting with either Luca Brussel, the world champion, or Ali Carter, who's already got a victory under his belt, of course, in the prelim round yesterday against Ding Zhongwei. They come hot on the heels of this match, the respective winners to play in the semis tomorrow. And that's another big mistake from Selby. Well, his game is unravelling a bit here. He's got lucky insofar as he's not left anything. But he looks like a player who's dwelling on those missed chances and he wouldn't be human if he wasn't because they were great ones, Neil, to get the match won much earlier. Indeed, yeah, the pressure is ramping up a few notches here. I think there's an argument both players are going to be disappointed to have lost, not just because it's they're knocked out of this event, but so many frames could have been won that have been snatched away from either of these two players. Now, this is a real test of his queuing. He looked under a lot of pressure in his last few shots. Oh, what a shot that is, though. Full credit, because he hadn't played a good shot for a while, but he's played a brilliant one there. One thing Selby always brings to the snooker table, whether he's playing well or struggling, is resilience, determination, and never say die attitude until the last ball has gone down and all hopes have been extinguished. And that was typically stubborn from Selby, wasn't it? A quite brilliant red after a series of mistakes. Now, can he capitalise? Seven. You may have just spotted there, of course, the uh, golden ball was very swiftly removed from the table by Jan Vass. Because, of course, blue was taken. I think Trump. probably right now, as much as it's great target and we've been speaking about it all week I don't suppose either player had that 
one six seven the forefront of their minds in this frame because it's very very tense out there it's all about the win chance to do it maybe in the next round So, yeah, he didn't look comfortable on the shot. It's very thin. It was using the extension on the cue. You can sometimes push those thick. The cue's a little heavier than usual with the extra piece of wood on it. And that's what happened. Very nervy out there. Too much top spin and the cue ball just trapped into that corner. Mark on. Played a good shot there because uh, not only getting the cue ball in behind the brown, but also bringing the black out, which, given the fact that he has played such a good shot, it's surely got to be in Mark Allen's favour. playing it with a bit of right hand side here it's always hard to judge the pace using side on these shots I tell you this worked out well but it was a little dangerous pushing that red towards the left corner can he even get to it to pot it I think he can pot it it was a dangerous shot Selby played. One. Held on either pink or black, though. Has uh, given Selby a little bit of respite there. Mark Allen, one. Thank you. 
Oh, that's a serious mistake. And he's got very, very lucky this time. I, I, this is, I reckon he played the, the safety shot side cushion first, bottom cushion back down the table, but he nearly went in off. That's not a shot you see misjudged that often. So I think on the balance of play, Mark Allen might have had the better of the run in this match, but the last few shots, Selby's been lucky. Got a feeling a lot of snooker is still to be played in this frame. If the red to the left of the pink will pot, yes, it will. We've just seen that. This is a shot to nothing red he's faced with here. I certainly get the feeling that these matches could all be like this nervy and tense. Up for grabs. And Luca Brassell and Ali Carter to follow, remember, at the conclusion of this match, the winners to play in the semi finals tomorrow. Later, Judd Trump against Sean Murphy, Ronnie O'Sullivan against John Higgins. Played it well. Cue ball hitting the brown as a stopper was handy, but he has left this red on. One. Three. Four. Well, this is now a really good chance. I mean, Selby's escape I thought was quite a good one off two cushions. 
but he did leave this red on. It's a good chance. It really is. The reds are scattered quite nicely. They're not necessarily in, in each other's way. He looked rather uncomfortable in his chair there, Selby, didn't he? He knows that he's had golden opportunities to win this match already. And he's now wondering if he'll get the further one. Well, he, he didn't want to play on the black while that red was on the black spot, but of course that's no. now going to be potted, so he, he can freely play on the black at the first opportunity. And it will certainly clean up the table a bit, make it more player-friendly for clearing. Well, the reason he's not on the blue is because, as you saw, he nearly, nearly missed that red on the top jaw. Not a clean pot. He's finished right in between. Back to middle, Keeble just running into reds. Wow. What about that for a miss? The shot before was the problem. But I always felt he would pop that. But as you saw, from an early stage, it was always overcut. Selby probably can't believe his luck to be back at the table. So soon. That's been the narrative of this match, really. A tale of missed opportunities from both players. They've had frames in their control and have allowed it to slip. Mark Allen's turn again. On. Three of the first four frames of this match, he could perhaps should have won and lost. And it was Mark Selby's turn in frames five and six. And now a chance he might well have not expected to get to finally, belatedly, come out on top in this one. Get himself into the last four. Yeah, I mean, I think the way this match has gone and the way that he hasn't put his chances away, you, you're just not going to rule out again but maybe Eight. he would get a boost from the ball that was missed from his opponent there that could see him get this match one at this visit i think sometimes you can be under pressure but you almost get a confidence booster from seeing someone like mark allen miss that easy chance could have played that a bit better as well Slightly trickier pink than he would have liked, with the pressure now at its most extreme. Yeah, and that's led to going a little too far on this shot. He's going to have to stretch, and he's missed something like this earlier 15. in the frame. It was not the same shot, but it was stretching across in the same way, without ever looking very comfortable on the shot. keeping the break going but a lot of work still to be done indeed everything looks hard graft even this shot he's not on the color for the red very well and even these top players in the world with everything that's up for grabs here are really showing the pressure. He's looked at the black, he doesn't fancy it. The angle he's got on the pink takes him away from the reds. And this, when he came to the table, was a good chance. He's making hard work of this. He's taking the big shot on this black.
Well, I suppose he thought, had he missed it, he might have blocked the pocket, but he didn't miss it. 23. Certainly trickier than a couple of blacks that he has missed already in this match. When victory was 24. within his grasp, but that was very well cued. And now it's Mark Allen's turn to wonder if he's had his last chance in this match. Both players certainly will have cause for some regret. Whoever comes out on the losing side. Allen had a clear opportunity 30. earlier in this frame. But the way things have gone, a further twist is by no means unlikely. Yeah, he had to play the cannon because he needed to get something from the two reds which were tight together and not available. Well, if he didn't win the match at this point, he would be bitterly disappointed because... 38. It's right there in front of him now. And you can just forget about those earlier mistakes. Strangely, the black that he played into the right corner, which just went in earlier in the frame in this visit, was a lot more difficult than the, the two that he missed in the frames <laughs> that went before. Forty-five points the difference. Snooker required for Mark Allen if the chance comes 45. to get it. If this goes in, you'd think it will be match over. Well, the red stays out, so the job 45. not quite done. Yes, Mark Allen needs a snooker. But it's just the one. We saw Ding Junhui at one stage needing three snookers in the decider against Ali Carter, and in the end it was an in-off when he had a chance to clear up to win that scuppered his hopes, so you just never know. It's hard to get a one snooker against anybody, but you always feel that Mark Selby invariably finds an escape route out of the, the snookers you put him in. So it has to be a mighty good one if that chance ever arises. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> what an outrageous turn of events that is. I mean, Mark Selby usually shows no emotion, but he could barely stand up to walk to the table when he saw that hit the jaw of the pocket like that. That's an outrageous piece of fortune. But kind of in keeping with the unpredictable nature of this match. 
players who've seemed certain to win frames ending up losing them. It's happened time and time again. And Selby, incredibly, has gone round oh, the back of the red. Yes. And, well, it's all happening here. He's left a free ball. Mark this is Hansen. unbelievable what's happened here. Well, the disappointment in Selby free. is palpable. This is extraordinary. I mean, how he's not hit a red here to go round the back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, words fail me because, I mean, the snooker was incredibly fortunate. He's gone with the chance to, to hit the red on. He, he tried to hit both reds there and missed them both. And of course, he had to play the brown, Mark Allen, because he needed it back in the frame. This is extraordinary into this match. 39 the difference. Enough points there now for Allen to win the match. And he's missed the green, and the drama continues. Yeah, he hasn't quite lost the match, though. It's not easy. Yeah, the pressure is getting to both of these players. <laughs> wow. I mean, I didn't expect him to miss this, but I still can't quite get over the snooker that Selby missed through that ridiculously small gap. What's this in? Match ball to leave Allen needing a couple of snookers. Undercut, so on we go. Yeah, and the frame is very much alive. I know the green's gone safe. But that is not the end of the frame on the match just yet. So we've got to do it all again and pop match ball again. Another very good shot. I mean, it looks like he it might be the tiniest sliver of that red available, but there really isn't much. Yeah, but that's having a look. Everyone is having a look rightly because it might need replacing. No, but you had a lot, yeah? I thought, yeah. three of them looking down the line as I say because the ball might need replacing and it would be a very precise replacement required if he does miss this it gets put back how much of this one sticks out not a lot very good shot very good shot chance again it's his sort of shot with maybe a right hand side and stun or screw just to sort of swing it in around the angles it's a shot you just very much on him a pot that would put him 40 in front with 35 left mark allen would need two snookers if this goes in and he's missed it by a couple of postcodes Goodness me, I don't think I've ever seen him miss that shot by that margin. It's one of his, I suppose, trademark shots, but he's very good at those. Absolute country mile away, wasn't it? Just shows what pressure can do, even to these great players. We're talking about the creme de la creme here in Riyadh. Chance for Allen. One. 
Oh, my word. He could still win this match, Mark Allen. Despite everything, Mark Selby, I'm sure we can't imagine how he's in this position now. Well, it, it's been an incredible match, actually, because it was every frame Seven. should have been won by the person who lost it, except I think one where Alan made a break. Yeah, the 73 break, the only frame Alan won of the first four. He could have won the first four and won the match. Eight. Then found himself 3-1 behind, somehow clawed his way back to a decider after Mark Selby missed blacks off their spots in successive frames. Well, this absolutely vitally gets top side of this yellow to green. I don't think he's got there. 13. I don't think he's got there, so it's virtually impossible to get position on the green. So it looks like he'll have to roll this in and play safe. I think either player almost needs match now. There you have it, didn't play on the, the green. Sorry? Jan Verhas is cracked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's getting to everyone. I must admit, I thought maybe I'd got it wrong then for a second. But not very often you see Jan Vass making a mistake, but the pressure has got to everybody. That's Mark Allen, 15. You can take this by one point, this match, Mark Allen. Regardless of the length of the match, regardless of the location, this game of snooker never fails to deliver high drama and this match has been chock full of it and we still don't know who's going to progress to the semi-finals here what a thriller it's been crazy match really has it got the legs to get there i don't think so so no, Miss. I thought the same. He actually got a little Mark. closer than I first thought, but he still missed it by three inches or so. I don't think the points mean anything for that first one because it'll still be, if the chance came, okay. he only wants one ball on the green. And you'd like to think in the end we'll make contact before too long. Too many points are lost. This time it slid off the cushion. He's made contact. <laughs> yes, it's not that difficult to still get hit, but it is keeping the pressure on. Oh, the miss. Mark Allen. Yeah. Well, that means that uh, Selby needs, needs more than one ball from here. So 16 points between them in Mark Selby's favour, which means he needs the green and the brown to finally get this match won. But it's still on a knife edge. When you think there was, at one point, a couple of snookers required, wasn't it, for uh, Mark Allen? 
Now he's, uh, he's well within the, the realms of winning it. As you say, not even a, one ball pot, uh, required. It's more than one for Selby. It's going to be a tough match for either to lose, but I think it's really going to hurt him. That's a good shot. Containment. That's all he was thinking about there. Their 18th meeting, they've played on the biggest stages, of course, including last season's Crucible semi-final epic, but few of their encounters have been as dramatic as this one in terms of the twists and turns on offer. Is it an absolutely brilliant shot. I have to say that some of Mark Allen's safety in this match has been of the highest quality and in some ways you know he's outplayed Mark Selby in the tactical department still Selby should have probably already won the match but those are two very separate things look at that last shot superb so we're looking to just play off the bottom cushion and he's completely misjudged this he looks under all kinds of pressure All of his trademark pots and safety shots have all gone out the window right now. Thirty-five minutes, but it's been an enthralling, deciding frame. And this is a key moment. One good pot from Allen, and he'll be favourite. Overcut the green. Must admit, when, I first, when he first played that, I assumed he was playing it into the corner pocket, but he overcut it. Similar to the black he missed. And speed into the opposite corner, uh, middle pocket. This is not an easy pot. Nothing's easy right now. Those pockets are getting smaller and smaller, aren't they, for both players? Looks like he might have second prize, though. Nice confirmation. Alan snookered on the green. Yeah, because if he gets closer to the green, Selby, went and, you know, without potting it, probably stays over the hole. What a big swerve, this. Played it really well. There's three more matches after this, folks. This quarter-final day could be quite an epic. But as a showcase for everything that this sport can offer in the way of drama, you couldn't wish for a better match. Unlucky, good effort, but the cube just creeping past the line of the black ball. get that safe but again he's put distance between the balls something he's done so well keeping the pressure on Mark Selby at all times
Yeah, that's uh, a snooker behind the blue. And it's given Mark Callan a bit of a headache here. The problem he's got is, yes, he's going to hit this. I think there's no doubt that the snooker is easy to hit, but he doesn't really know where the green is going to go. If it's flying across the table, it could hit the pink, it could hit the black. It could go into a pocket, of course, but he doesn't really know where, where it's going to finish. Oh, goodness. I only said it could go into a pocket. What a fluke that is. Well, the pink is now on the side cushion. Mark Selby barely raising a rueful smile, but it's all happening. That's the one consolation for Selby, that pink being pushed into a safe spot. I know, but it's hardly... It is a consolation. A small one. Yeah, you're right. It's something. It's a glimmer of hope. Wow. Seven. Does that make it a big pocket down there? Surely not. This is an incredible finish. I've not seen a snooker match quite like this for a long time, and I include yesterday's match between Ali Carter and Ding Junhui. We often hear it said that the balls don't forgive you if you miss an opportunity to kill a match off and Mark Selby it must be said had clear chances in frames five and six to do so is it gonna come back to hurt him in a big way here well the double is on if he hits it at a certain speed oh my goodness oh my goodness he's not left it what has Selby got to do to win this match this is just unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Mark Allen smiling, no wonder. He's living a charmed life at the moment. Maybe he's destined to win this match. So down to the last two balls. Selby needing one of them. Well, I mean, what do you do here? I mean, is there any way that that pink will pop past the black? If there isn't, then Mark Allen puts a lot of distance between these two balls. Cue will up the top left side. This is what pressure, playing for large amounts of money, do to anybody. Deciding to go more conventionally. Of course, there's always the Mark Selby shot to take the pink back down into that corner because he's under the impression, I'm sure, that the right side of the table is completely blocked off. So this is extremely dramatic. He's got to be careful of... If it is too much of the... I think he could get a double kiss, which would be potentially end of match. And I think he can afford to hit left side of the pink. As long as it goes past the middle pocket, you'd like to think it would be all right. He got the double kiss. He got the double kiss, but got away with it. Wow. Just when you think you've seen everything at this game, this match has uh, made me think again. Twice across safety shot. Cue will back down the other end of the table. Played perfectly. And clearly, it's a pink ball game. I mean, where the black is, pretty obvious, isn't it, that whoever pots the pink is going to win the, the frame of match.
It was quite a dangerous shot then, wasn't it? Just a, the off First of all, that he could have knocked the black in, but is this possible? It clearly doesn't go directly, but is it possible that it would go off the black? For Mark Allen, it's finished in the worst place. The fact that it's on the cushion is not in his interest because from there, there's just an outside chance it could squeeze in. Both players having a good old look at it. Allen concerned that that could happen. Selby, I think, not convinced. He only needs the pink, of course, Selby. Doesn't have to worry about the black. Well, I think it will go, but that's if you... You know, if you hit it absolutely spot on, if he doesn't, and he double kisses the black, then uh, he leaves it right over the pocket. Incredible drama here. With three matches still to come on this second day of three. I think he has to play it. I think he has to play it, but you've got to play it fairly slowly. If he hits it hard, he'll never get it in off the black. Plays it slowly and misses it, he leaves it over the pocket. Is this the moment that Mark Selby finally clinches victory? No. He's got the snooker. And of course, Mark Allen needs the black as well as the pink. Goodness me. Whatever next is going to happen here. It's looking good. So the cue ball nearly went in as Six. well. So this is just mind blowing, isn't it? Just when you think you've seen everything in this sport, something else pops up to surprise you. This has been an extraordinary match with an even more remarkable finale. We're down to the final ball, which is absolutely fitting for a match of this nature. But who is going to have the last word? Well, OK, there's two things he can do here. One, he can just chip the black onto the cushion and put distance between them. But he could also play to, the, to double this into the right middle pocket. He's played it. Amazing. A crazy match. One of the most remarkable afternoons of drama we've seen in this sport in recent times and we've seen plenty but that one might top it all and mark allen incredibly has had the final say he wins on the final black it's a painful loss for mark selby who had numerous chances to put it away how he hasn't won it i don't know but it's mark allen through to the semi-finals